Okay, uh, we're here again with uh, Jerry Ward, Internet Authority, BioS3 training. Authority. Yeah. <laughs> Respect my authority. Exactly. So, so Jerry, um, so today's question: uh, Would you, as a bodybuilder, train antagonist muscles together, so, such as the uh, chest and uh, back, um, or the bicep and tricep, versus uh, training uh, primary and secondary muscles on the same session, such as uh, chest, tricep, and back, bicep. Uh, which do you prefer, and why do you think it's more effective? Well, I don't think either way would be more effective, honestly. I think that as long as you're stimulating a muscle, I don't think it's whether it's an antagonistic or if it's like an accessory muscle. What I do think is, you know, training chest and back together are two large muscle groups that take a lot of energy, a lot of intensity. So if you can train both of those, one of those muscle groups are usually going to get cut short. It's like calves. When people throw calves in at the end of their workout, that cat, the, cat, the muscle itself can take a beating and needs to take a beating to be able to be stimulated, but usually it doesn't get 100% intensity because you've already trained legs or hamstrings or quads or bigger muscle group that by the time you get to it, you don't have the energy. So for me, I, I prefer to do the, uh, the accessory muscles with, like if I do chest, um, like I do shoulders, triceps, and biceps on one day. Um, and what I'll do is like, you know, I have pressing movements on shoulders, which are getting the triceps to essentially, you know, you're not working the triceps, you are, but you're focusing on pressing with the delt. By the time you get to the tricep, as long as I'm getting that tricep to go to failure in the three sets that I'm doing for it, because they do very low volume, as long as I'm hitting that, that, uh, um, that muscle group and making it go to failure, the next day when I train, I'm going to do legs. So it's going to give my upper body a whole day of rest before the, fourth, the third day after that, which is usually a full rest day. When I come back on the fourth day, usually my rotation starts over again. So, you know, it all depends on like the volume of your workout, the intensity, the way everything is put together as to whether or not you'd be able to get like, you know, chest and back or buys and tries because it's a smaller muscle group. You could train those together. Like last week I trained buys and tries doing supersets back and forth. You know, it doesn't stimulate growth. You know, doing a pumping sets, I don't believe it does. I believe you have to go to failure to be able to actually stimulate muscle growth beyond a certain point after beginners. Okay, so um, uh, I was going to ask, so <clears throat> I train uh, bench press uh, five times a week. Uh, uh, do you think that uh, there's any utility for a bodybuilder to be benching that many times per week? I did it. I did the, um, the routine was from Tom Platt's optimal training system. It was benching five or six. It was either five or six days a week. And what they did was they ran the rep ranges differently. It was called micro periodization. It's in the Big Beyond Belief book, and it is absolutely something that Bodybuilders, all bodybuilders use, and powerlifters use periodization themselves, which is basically instead of doing months of periodization, it's condensed into a week's time. And these principles are how to get your body to build muscle but stay in the stay outside of the overtraining zone. So, you know, as you're putting your routine together, it was like five sets of bench per day. So it wasn't like a lot of volume. And like one day it would be like 20 to 25 reps. The next day it would be like three to five reps. The next day would be like 50 reps. The next day would be back to three to five. So they adjusted, and I can't remember this very specific to what it was, but they adjusted the volume and intensity from day to day. So you'd have like a high intensity day, a high volume day, back to a high intensity day, a high volume day, so that your joints would actually get a rest and you'd stimulate the muscle more on certain days. And then the other days you'd get the power moves, like three to five reps where it would actually hit your tendons a lot. And the idea was specifically to increase your bench press or your squat or whatever exercise you plugged into that. Now my problem was my chest at the time. So I decided I'm gonna do the chest, which is what the program was geared towards. And literally, you put on 50 pounds on your bench like that, you know, with no bench shirt or any accessory um, lifting gear or anything like that. Well, that will really equate to muscular gains when you go back to your regular training. So it's like, yes, you can do it, but I'm sure that you would agree that you probably couldn't go year round training five days a week like that without any break at all or reducing the intensity or changing the volume. You know, like yeah, you, you have to change the intensity and volume. You, know, you have to, to adapt and recover. So I think if, you're, if you know what you're doing and you know how to do your volume and your intensity and you know, how to cut back and when to push, I think you know, it should be fine. Okay, so for a beginner, uh, do you think uh, training chest uh, one time a week is sufficient for, for uh, hypertrophy and growth? For a beginner, somebody just starting out? Correct. No. No, I think they're not able to push the muscle to the point where it is being stimulated enough to grow. So what's happened is they recover very quickly. So if you were a beginner and you changed the chest on Monday, you're probably almost fully recovered by Tuesday because you haven't pushed the muscle part on. You can't. There's no way. You just don't have the mental capability to be able to push that hard to get the muscle to do it, nor do you have the control over the muscle to get to the point where you would break down or go to failure or something like that to begin with. So I think personally the three time a week, like Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 
if you're going to be a beginner walking in the gym and you're training, a full body routine, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday is absolutely the best way to go. Okay, now also for, uh, for squats, uh, uh, do you believe bodybuilders have, uh, are missing uh, good technical ability on the squat? Technical ability? I don't know. I think the bodybuilders have a tendency to shy away from squats a lot. Now, I'm not saying all bodybuilders, I'm saying a lot of them. A lot of them will do, you know, endless leg extensions, endless leg presses, endless hack squats. But when it comes to the bar, three, four sets and they're out. You know, they don't do much more volume next. It's so taxing on the body. So I don't think that, I think they more or less shy away from it. So like technical ability, I think that they have a tendency to try to feel the muscles more rather than just do the movement. Where I don't know if that would come into play. I guess as a power lift, you'd have to have more technical um, science behind it to move the bar, whereas your movements and your levers have to be a certain way to get the most amount of power. Yeah, we want to get it really consistent. Because uh, if we have deviation, then uh, it's not, it's not going to do us any good. Right, so like in a squat, for instance, like there are times where instead of going all the way down, all the way up every rep, I'll do like a full rep, a quarter rep, a half rep, a full rep, or three full reps, a quarter rep, a half rep, like mixing it up in between um, all of within one set, trying to make sure that the muscle is getting stimulated. The problem with the squat is it's very hard to go to failure on the squat because your lower back and your, your cardiovascular system gives up before your legs do. Uh, do, uh, do you think you need to go acid grass to stimulate uh, glute uh, hypertrophy? Um, I'll be honest with you, I did ask the grass for a long time, and then I was told by my new trainer, um, Phil Hernan, the coach, to go mid-range, which is not all the way to the top, not all the way to the bottom. And then my legs improved leaps and bounds beyond going that full range, specifically because my levers for the squat have always sucked. It's a bad exercise for me. So when I'm going all the way up and all the way down, there's no way I'm going to use the same amount of weight as I could in that mid-range of motion. And what happened is, over time, you know, I'm getting really good at doing the squat, but the poundages weren't really going up to where they should have been. However, if now I pull the, the squat into that mid-range and the, use more weight, my legs actually get more hypertrophy from more of the weight with a moderate rep range, trying to go to failure as close as I could. So it was my glutes and hamstrings that developed too. So I don't believe it's imperative. I don't think you have to, but I mean, also did stiff legged deadlifts through that whole time too. Was that responsible for the glutes and hamstring development? Possibly. You know, you don't know because I didn't do one without the others. Okay, so uh, basically what you're saying uh, as far as uh, training, uh, you would not uh, tax two large muscle groups. So you would rather do a uh, primary such as the chest and then uh, focus on uh, uh, accessory muscles. Right, unless you're doing like a two-day split. So if you come in the morning doing chest, the nighttime doing back, you have that whole time to recover during the day so that you can give both muscle groups the, the full stimulus and the full amount of attention that they deserve. But if you're gonna do, I mean, for instance, let's say you do back first, your chest is not gonna get the same amount of intensity or energy that your, your back do. If you do chest first, it's the same thing for back. They're both very taxing taxing workouts. A lot of people split up their legs, they do quads one day and hands the other. There's both muscle groups together, they're very taxing. When you leave a, a workout doing uh, calves, quads, and, and hamstrings, I mean, you can barely walk out of the gym, you get home and fall asleep. Yeah. Okay, uh, thanks to Bios3Training, uh, Jerry Ward, and we're...